everyone, and welcome back to another episode of More Sewing with Michelle. My name's Michelle Rank, and I'm your host for this episode of More Sewing with Michelle. And I can't wait to show you the very special project slash craft item that I brought in today. It is from OESD, which stands for Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design. It's a family-owned business since 1987, and in 1998, they started designing freestanding lace designs. And that's what I have for you here today. It's the freestanding garden blossoms. And let me hold you that package up real close. We've got three flowers that we're going to create with freestanding lace. We have a poppy, a magnolia, and also an anemone. So much to show you today, and I'm so excited because this is something that I will wear when I'm out and about, and it's just a fun little additive to your clothing, but you can put it on anything. You can make it on your hat. You can make it on quilts. There's so many things that you can do with this fun machine embroidery project by OESD. So let's get going. Before I get going and all the really, really fun stuff that I have for you today, um, I'm going to be doing a demo um, as far as putting these wonderful three flowers together, the anemone, the poppy, and also the beautiful magnolia. So you're going to want to pick up this CD from OESD. And like I said, there's the three flowers that I'll be creating today. And I have a special surprise on a fourth flower. But there's some other items that you're going to need to be successful. Now, I used um, Badge Master by OESD as one of the stabilizers. And I put this on top of the Aqua Mesh stabilizer. So I basically hooped the Aqua Mesh and put Badge Master on top. And those are the only two stabilizers I use to create my freestanding lace. Pretty important. Both of them are water soluble. You're going to wash them out. And I've got a demo to show you how easy it was. And I want you to know this episode is the first time that I've done any freestanding lace in all of my years of machine embroidery and quilting. So I was pretty excited. And I loved the fact that they're flowers, they're three dimensional, um, they're just a really fun project. Now, I often will wear um, a quilted flower that I have made on my shirts to kind of jazz them up a little bit. My mom loves them. She wears them all the time, too. And I think this is the perfect little item to make a little brooch or a clip for your hat. So I've got a bunch of information as far as that, too. And I can't wait to show you the finished product. But I'm getting ahead of myself again. One other thing that you're going to want to get is a hemostat. So if you don't have one, we'll have those on our website as well on the More Sewing with Michelle landing page. You're going to need that to get um, the little pull tabs through. And then I used a hot glue gun. I also have these wonderful, they're like little brooch clips. Um, it's got a clip here that you can clip onto things, but it also has a pin where you can pin it onto your clothing or your hat or wherever you wanted to stick it. So I'm using these as a base for afterwards so that I can clip it on to wherever I want. Um, and I got those years ago. I can't even tell you where I got, but they are um, a pretty common thing for like jewelry making or hair supplies. So, but you can use just regular pin backs. You can use whatever you have. Completely up to you. And based on what you do with this wonderful product will change maybe what you do with that. Um, the other thing that's going to be very helpful is the Applifuse pressing sheet. I use this um, when I press them after they dried a little bit. Also, it's a wonderful thing to put them, once you get everything rinsed out, to put them on here to let them dry. So this, once again, which I featured before on a different episode of More Sewing with Michelle, is going to be very handy once again in this project. And then the other thing, um, you're going to want some brads. Now, I I love brads and I use them for um, a lot of different things. Um, I was a scrapbooker and paper crafter, so I've got jars and jars full of fun 
wonderful brads. So I was able to use what I had. If you don't have them, you're going to want to pick up some brads. And I recommend, let me see if I can pull some out here. You're going to want a brad. So we have two different ones here, but they have different lengths of the um, part that goes through and then you open up. You're going to want a brad that has a longer, I don't know what to call it, stamen, the long part that goes through. If you have one like this, it has a very, very short stamen, then that one's maybe a half inch. It's going to make it a little bit different, difficult to get through all the layers of your freestanding lace. So I definitely encourage you to have a brad that has longer straight pieces. This one is almost an inch. So anything long, um, but use what you have. Um, you may want to put it together differently. This is just the way I did it once again, using these wonderful brads. And the other thing that I absolutely encourage you to do is to definitely print out these instructions. This is a very technical thing. And I found myself referencing these instructions a lot. So when you get your, your um, embroidery files, you're going to want to go ahead and load those onto your machine, but you're also going to want to print out these instructions. There's 22. I printed them on both sides to save on paper. And if you're worried about ink, you can also do them in grayscale like I did here. Um, and then in here, keep in mind, um, you don't have to use the exact colors that they show, but, you know, it's completely up to you what your flowers end up looking like. But these instructions are going to be very handy because it is a little bit technical. And if you're like me and you have never done freestanding lace, um, this is a good project to start, but also it's going to give you the confidence because you're going to have those instructions in hand along the way. And that's kind of it. Besides your embroidery machine, the hoop, um, and all of that, you're going to be fine, and it's going to be a very, very fun project for you. So let me get going on some of the additional information you need to know. So for the sake of time, obviously I couldn't stitch out everything on one video in one day, so I had to do a little bit of work yesterday. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a teaser. So I have one of the flowers that I have completely done. Isn't that gorgeous? Now can you see why I love these? Let me hold it up closer. So this is the anemone. And I haven't finished putting it together, but I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to put all the different pieces together to show you what it looks like. Now I'm going to undo the brad and I'm going to show you all the different pieces that are included in this one particular flower. So on this brad, it's a pretty fun brad. It's got stripes, but... It has two different layers of a black little daisy-like flower, like so. So we have two of those, and then we have one piece that looks like so, and then we have two petal pieces, and then there's two different pieces for the leaves. So as you can see, when you layer these all together, that's where you get the magic and everything comes together with that brad. Now I'm going to keep them separated because I want to show you how I put it together and also how I attach things. But let me show you how I did the stitching on my machine. Um, and I use my new machine, which is so excited. I had the Janoni M17 Continental and I've named him Donald. So you might hear me reference Donald, um, which is after my grandfather. So you'll hear me reference Donald throughout my videos, but that's my new machine and I love it. But let's get going so I can show you the stitching on these wonderful garden blossoms by OESD. So as you can see, I have done multiple hoopings to kind of fit in all these different pieces for the flowers. Um, Shane, Mr. Donald here is doing a great job getting everything stitched out. But these are stitch intensive because um, those two stabilizers are going to be washed away. There has to be supporting stitches as well as detail stitches and then decorative stitches as well. So this is not a fast project, but I tell you what, I am so excited 
to see what it's going to turn out looking like. Let me get closer here. This is part of the flower that it's stitching there. Those are magnolia petals. Um, and these are for part of the um, other flowers. That's another magnolia. There's some magnolia leaves. So anyways, lots of stitching going on here. So isn't that cool? I love Donald. He saves me so much time and he's so efficient. Love my Janome machine. But let me talk about stabilizer real quick. So this next little video clip is of me actually stitching and I'm talking about some hooping tips. So my stabilizer, I used a longer piece. I didn't cut it just for the hoop. I cut a long section and then I just re-hooped each time so that I could fit more things in. And I'm lucky that on my machine, I have the ability to adjust and edit things so that I can kind of squeeze things in. Lots of our modern um, top of the line machines have that ability. So I recommend that you absolutely do that. But let's check out this clip and you can see some of the stitching happening again. Okay, working on these and I wanted to show you how I used a smaller hoop, but I actually went ahead and had a larger piece of stabilizer so I didn't waste as much. And you can see I just simply, you know, started and continued on. These are two different flowers here. I've got all of the pieces for the poppy done. I've got the leaves, I've got the center and that. And then I'm working on, I believe this is the magnolia's leaves. But I'm gonna continue to do what I'm doing where I'm taking that hoop and I'm gonna hoop multiple things in it to save on stabilizer. And that's my little tip today. And as you can see, Donald's just stitching away. So I've got everything stitched out and now I need to cut things apart. So I've got a video to talk about how I went about um, cutting apart the things and getting ready for when I rinse out that stabilizer. And I tell you, I was a little bit scared because once again, this was my first time doing freestanding lace, but it was so rewarding. So let's get to the next video. Okay, so I wanted to show you, this is what I did. I used my large hoop and I hooped as many of the different flower pieces for our freestanding garden blossoms. And I've got one she'd already cut out, but you can see I have multiple things. And what you're gonna do is simply, let me take this one away, is since you're gonna rinse out this stabilizer, I'm simply going to cut these out pretty close to the actual embroidered design. And like so just cut really close all the way around. So that way when I'm rinsing out, I don't have to worry about a bunch of stabilizers around the edges. Just to make it a little bit of a faster process. And just like so, cut around on all of them, get rid of the waste so that I only have this to worry about. Now I went ahead on some of the other ones, you can see, I didn't get all into the very nooks and crannies. I just got a lot around it. Um, got some big ones there. Can't wait to get these rinsed out and show you what it starts looking like when I start putting them together. So you can see from where we are now, I've got all of these done and ready to go. I'm gonna finish cutting out the rest of these ones that I have here and then um, let me show you how we start rinsing them out. So we've got um, the stitched out embroidery cut up and we're getting ready to do where all the magic is and we're going to rinse out that stabilizer. And I know that's kind of scary because you've done all these stitching um, and you think, what is the stitching going to be held on to? But I'll give you a little sneak peek. This is one of the petals for the magnolia with all of that stabilizer rinsed out. And the, one of the reasons why I had to do these videos in multiple days is because I had to have time for the threads and everything to completely dry before I could put them together. So this was all done yesterday. So much fun. And I've got a video now to show you how I actually rinsed out and what to do. Okay, so I've got all my pieces and it says to run this through warm water so let me get my sink going here let me get the temperature that's warm 
And then, I don't know if you know this, I don't think I've shared yet. This is the first time I've done freestanding lace. So I'm a little bit nervous, but excited as well. So I'm going to run it through and wait for the stabilizer to kind of go away. I'm just kind of massaging it a little bit. And you can see the edges, all the, the stabilizer is absolutely going away. I've got a towel right here next to me. Now it says if you want yours to be a little bit stiffer, not to run as much warm water in, to leave a little bit of the stabilizer in there. Um, I don't know what I want, so I'm gonna play around. I've got you know, all of the ones that I've made, and once again, I'm just continuing to kind of massage it out. When I get done, I'm putting it on the little towel next to me for right now, and then I will put it onto um, a drying sheet, one of my um, Aplifuse sheets, to make sure that it dries nice and flat. So once again, I'm just going through, kind of massaging the stabilizers out with warm, not hot, warm water. Um, pretty easy. It's kind of exciting, I will say. And I've got lots of pieces to do. Right now I'm working on the magnolia. And I'm just going till I feel like that sliminess of the stabilizer is gone. And then I'm gonna put it on my towel here and move on to the next one. So you can see we've got some funky kind of shapes for these flowers. And once again, the first set that I'm working on is the magnolias. Um, definitely a favorite flower of the southern states. And just working kind of like I'm trying to think. It kind of reminds me of when I used to work with um, some other different craft medium, how to get it out. This one, hold it up close, you can see it's got lots of little, little areas there. So it should be pretty interesting once we get all the stabilizer worked out of this piece. And once again, just warm running water. Keep repeating myself. Now you can see all of those little petals have movement. They're kind of separating from each other and that's what we want. Pretty exciting to think that we did all of this stitching on my embroidery machine and now all that stabilizer is going out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some of the other ones on the bottom while I work on the little one. And that way the stabilizer should run out and I don't have to, you know, take as much time going through it. But once again, working on the magnolia, I've got two other flowers. We've got the poppy and the anemone that I need to do next. But I'm not gonna do that all on camera because obviously it takes just a little bit of time to make sure you get all that stabilizer out. So I think that piece is pretty good. Put it on my towel and let's check out the ones I left on the bottom. Now I kind of like that they curl. I think it gives a petal more a realistic look. So I'm not gonna be real upset if I have curved petals, because I think that looks kind of cool. Put it on my towel, and I got one more here. It's almost gone, so that's pretty good. Yep. I can tell you, I'm liking this. And then I'll show you, here's the pieces for um, the poppy. I'm gonna just stick them in the sink, and I'll cut from here, and I'll get your attention again when I've got everything set, so. This is what I'm going to be doing for a little bit. So here's where the fun starts. Let's put these flowers together. So the first one that I want to put together is the magnolia. Now the magnolia is a very, very scented. It's a highly fragrant flower. It is the state flower of Mississippi and also Louisiana. It's actually an evergreen tree and it's very cold hardy. And um, it means purity, nobility, joy, luck, innocence, strength, health, and endurance. So lots of meanings are attached with this flower, the magnolia. 
but let me show you. Um, so you can see we have two pieces for the center of that magnolia, and then I have the brad. And this is where this wonderful hemostat is gonna come into play. So you can see we have the center piece, that's where the brad's gonna go through, and then we have the three holes, and then we have these three nibs on the side of the stitched out um, machine embroidery. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull um, from the back side, go ahead and grab one of those nibs and pull it through to the other side. And this is where these hemostats make it super easy. I like to do two of them, pull to the back like so. You can see both of them there. And then I'm going to add my brad smack dab in the middle hole like so. You can see I'll pull that one back. So you got the brad there, and then holding the brad, you can use that, grab that last little nib, like so, whoops, like so, and pull it to the brad. And this is the part that's, it's only the, the one thing that's really tricky, and it's only on the magnolia. And what that does is it gives that magnolia that 3D look. So there you go, that's how you get going. And the next part, you're just gonna continue to assemble the flower. So isn't that cool? Look at the flower, it's definitely 3D. You can see that it sticks out. And then I still need to add the leaves. So I'm simply going to add those in. You gotta make sure that you keep your brad where it needs to be. I'm going to add, it might be easier to show you up here, I'm going to add that last leaf through the hole that they have. Now, OESD has thought of everything as far as putting these together, and I'm going to decide where I want my leaves to kind of hang out. I think I want to rotate this one around so that it's on there. I like it there. And then once I get everything there, you'll see that I have this brad and I'm going to separate those two tines or stamens, whatever you want to call them, like so, pinch it down nice and tight so you can see that brad. Now look at the magnolia. Oh my golly, it's beautiful. So I love that you have dimension, it's 3D and I tried to make the leaves completely dry flat, and then as I was doing it, I went, wait a minute, maybe I don't want them to be completely flat. Maybe I like, like a normal flower or leaf, there's some movement and they're not completely flat. So I deliberately started to let them dry a little bit not flat, and you can adjust these. These are completely pliable, so that's one. That's the magnolia, and I'll um, go ahead let me get, I have my hot glue gun here. I'm going to simply add some hot glue on the back side, and then I'm gonna put it onto my little clip, pressing down to make sure that everything is nice and secured. Keep in mind, I am using hot glue, so when it hits that metal, it does get a little hot, but go ahead and I'm gonna just set it aside now and let it cool off. So the next one that I want to show you is the anemone. Oh no, let's do the poppy next. Let's do the poppy. Now the poppy is a scent that is slightly sweet, has a little bit of citrus notes, citrus notes to it. Oh my gosh, I can't say citrus. Um, it is the state flower of California, the orange poppy. It is an annual or a perennial, and it depends upon the variety. There's different types of poppies that we have here. It's a symbol of Armistance Day on November 11th each year, and that is a holiday to recognize the end of World War I. And I'll tell you, I was in um, England at the end of October, and I kept seeing these major red poppies everywhere. And I finally asked someone because they were absolutely beautiful all over the country. And that, that's when I was educated on the importance of the red poppy um, for Armistice Day in um, Europe. So I love them. So once again, I'm going to show you just real quickly. You're going to have it here. I'm going to go ahead and stick those through with my brad super easily like so. 
show it on the close-up. And then I do like to rotate the petals so that they're not completely on top of each other. And then I'm gonna put it through the next step of this flower, straight through the center. And then this flower actually has two different petals. I'm going to go ahead and go through the center like so. I'm going to add the next petal and keep in mind to rotate it so that it's in a different position. Now I'm going to add those leaves and keep in mind, I like the leaves to go different directions so that we see more of the pattern of the leaves. So you can rotate it around wherever you like those leaves to fall. And then once you're done, the beauty of these brads is you simply pull the different pieces away. I like to kind of bend it nice and tight like so. And then look at that, look how pretty that poppy is. It's absolutely gorgeous. And keep in mind that we have it with the bright red for the holiday and the end of World War I Armistance Day. So I'm gonna put this one aside and I'll hot glue it in just a minute. So I just love these anemone flowers. Now, anemones are really interesting flowers. They have no scent. The name comes from the Greek meaning wildflower. They are a perennial and they're very easy to grow. They have lots of meaning. They have forsaken love, sincerity. They're used in good luck. Um, purple anemones um, have been long believed to have protection against evil. And then anemones come in a variety of colors, white, pink, purple, red, and blue. So you can really get crazy with how you make your anemones. And I just love them. They're just a striking flower. Okay, I'm working on my last one. And I started to do something silly, maybe a little bit crazy. But I'm taking all different pieces from the three different flowers, the magnolia, the anemone, and the poppy. And I'm gonna create like a mix, mash, floral, um, and I'm doing it in my favorite color purples. And you can see the details there, stitching out one of the pistols. We got those pieces, we got the other pieces, and we got the leaves. And once again, I just kind of have everything in the hoop and I just keep going through. And um, we got the aqua mesh underneath and the badge master or stabilizers. Can't wait to see what this one comes out with, with, you know, kind of a mixed bag from the three pop, from the three flowers, excuse me, to make one really cool flower. So we shall see. So I did it. I made a Frankenstein flower. So this is what it looks like all put together. It has bits and pieces of the anemone, the poppy, as well as the magnolia. It's got the magnolia leaves, that's for sure. Um, and I used my favorite color purple, and I made just this gorgeous flower, and you can do that too. So either you can make the beautiful traditional magnolia bloom, and we also have the poppy and the anemone. Aren't they gorgeous? Can you see and think about all the different things that you want to put these on? If you want to wear them on your clothing, in your hat, you can even just have them a little barrette. So many things that you can do with these gorgeous, beautiful, even if they're Frankenstein, 3D and machine embroidered, freestanding lace flowers. So there you go. That's all the time I have for today. But before you go, you're going to want to pick up this wonderful OESD Freestanding Garden Blossoms CD, as well as a hemostat if you don't have one, the stabilizers to help make this project be a breeze. So much fun. I hope I inspired you. Look, I have some of them on. And once again, here's that wonderful anemone that we have. So much fun. I love them, and I guarantee you I'm going to be wearing these out and about. I'm already thinking about, hmm, who can I make some more of these for? So, for you to get your software, you know what to do by now. You're going to go to 
moors-sew.com and you're going to go to the Moors Sewing with Michelle landing page where you can get any and all items that you need to create these wonderful freestanding lace flowers. Make your own Frankenstein version. I think the purple one's here. We have the magnolia, the poppy, and the anemone. It's been my pleasure, and I had so much fun today and yesterday creating these items for you. I look forward to seeing you again on the next More Sewing with Michelle. And until then, bye-bye. Happy stitching, everyone.